three. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Waldrop Dairy's virtual chat. I am Brittany with Discover Dairy Program, and we are so excited that you are joining us today as we get to meet Farmer Shelby and Farmer Austin, and of course, your adorable adopted calves, Chocolate, Cinderella, Gabby, and Kissy. Today's chat wouldn't be possible without the generous support of the Dairy Alliance and the Dairy Excellence Foundation. So thank you to both of those organizations for making today possible. First, this chat is part of the Adopt-A-Cow program. And for anyone that is new to Discover Dairy or Adopt-A-Cow, it is a free online resource that covers common core standards in math, reading, and science, all while teaching dairy concepts. And you can access these resources by going to www.discoverdairy.com. We'd also love for you to join the Adopt-A-Cow Fund next year. Um, if you've either joined us this year, we're excited to have you to as we end the program, or uh, if it's kind of just hopping on and enjoying the fun, we'd love for you to join us next year for your first time. Registration will be opening on May 1st, so in about a month, and uh, registration will, can be found at uh, discoverdairy.com backslash adopt. If you go to discoverdairy.com backslash adopt, there'll be a little form right now for you that you can sign up to get a notification to receive the registration when that opens on May 1st. So again, discoverdairy.com backslash adopt to get the notification of when registration opens up on May 1st. Next, as everyone continues to join us live today, just a reminder, we are live. So everything you're seeing today is not pre-recorded. We are excited to be joining um, everyone and our calves at Waldrop Dairy. But you can see before we hop over to our farmers today that that chat feature is enabled and we can see a lot of people joining in and uh, letting us know where you're at. So please continue to use that. Go ahead and comment, show your excitement, show some love, share some hearts. Um, and of course, course, ask questions using that chat feature. Farmer Austin and Farmer Shelby are really excited to answer those questions as we are joined together here for the next 25 minutes or so. So make sure you keep using that chat feature. And before we go over to Farmer Shelby and Farmer Austin, we're going to just see who's joining us today. So we're going to go ahead and check out who is joining us. So we have first, um, Miss Elsie's class in LaGrange, Georgia. Hello, everybody. Welcome. We've got folks from Locust Grove, Georgia. Hello. Uh, we've got Dr. Bennett's first grade class in Hogansville, Georgia. We're excited and we guys adopted chocolate. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, we've got a homeschool group that adopted Kissy. Welcome, everybody. Um, let's see, we have got some folks from Franklin, Georgia. That is a homeschooling group with their three kiddos. So hello, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. And we've got a couple other folks here that are also joining us. And also, let's see, one more. Uh, Mrs. Hamilton's class, also from LaGrange, uh, and they adopted Cinderella. So thank you so much to all of you and anyone else that's joining us today. Um, we're excited to have you. To anyone that's on replay, hello. We're, thank you so much for watching this on replay as well. We hope you enjoy this live live chat with Farmer Shelby and Farmer Austin. So with that, I am pleased to introduce you to our farmers, Farmer Shelby and Austin in LaGrange, Georgia at Woldrop Dairy. Hey, Farmer Shelby and Austin, how are you guys doing today? Good, how are you? We are doing good. We're doing good. So we are so excited to hear from you and learn about your farm and your calves. So I'll let you guys take it away. Well, good morning. Um, thank y'all for being a part of our program. We're so glad to be here with y'all and get to talk to you today. Um, my name is um, Farmer Shelby, and I'm actually an ag teacher at Troop High School. Um, I'm serving on our Farm Bureau Committee um, underneath the Women's Chair and Scholarship um, Program. Um, my husband is Austin Waldrop, and we've also got another farmer here today. Um, actually from Miss Elsie's class, to Farmer Flat Stanley. So I want to make sure y'all see him. He's been helping us around the farm this morning. And I also want to give a shout out to Rosemont Elementary, which is across the street. And let um, Farmer Austin tell you a little bit about himself and how he got involved in the dairy industry. Good morning, y'all. My name is Austin Wald, uh, Farmer Austin. I started in the dairy business when I was just 19 years old. Yes, that's not very common to be started a dairy farm, but this is what I always wanted to do. It started as a supervised agriculture experience, which some of y'all may know that if you don't, if you're in an ag class in middle school and 
high school, you may get to know. And this was just my passion. And I'm also involved on the Young Farmer Board of Troop County Farm Bureau. So I'm not also a dairy farmer. I'm also very involved in the community with, with agriculture. So I'm more than a farmer. I'm in the community. I help my wife, Shelby, with her ag program as the advisory committee with FFA. So I'm a farmer by day and helping the community by night. That is awesome. We absolutely love that you guys are such young farmers and young supporters of your community. And we really just thank you for being here today. You guys have a pretty, pretty awesome story and very unique um, from any other farmer. So thank you so much for, for being here today with us. Yes, ma'am. We're glad yeah. to be here. Yeah. Um, so today, I guess we'll start introducing the cows that y'all have adopted. Um, Austin, we'll go ahead and introduce Gabby. This is Gabby. She's a purebred Holstein. She's about six and a half months old. And chocolate's on the far end. And she's a purebred Jersey. She's about six and a half months old as well. One thing um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about, um, chocolate is very sweet. She's Aww. very curious. Um, she was almost licking the camera earlier. <laughs> so she's getting into a little bit of everything. Oh and then Gabby, the first one we introduced, the Holstein, she is so sweet. But she loves the spotlight. Now Aww. she's being bashful. Right, of course. <laughs> but most of the time she loves when we take her pictures adorable so they're about six and a half months old already which is crazy because when we first adopted them they were just these tiny little babies um I think they were probably you know between 80 and 100 pounds or so when they were born how much are they weighing now and about how tall are they now they look big <laughs> they are pretty big so I'm five foot tall so I'm a little on the short end so you can kind of see me and Gabby not that far away in height um, she's going to be our tallest one because Holsteins are a lot bigger than other breeds. So you can see that we have Gabby, Cinderella, and Chocolate that are a little shorter. Austin, what would you guesstimate that they weigh and, and how tall they are now? I'm guessing they're weighing probably 450, 500, maybe wow. a little more. But they're grown so big because we are a grazing day which means our cows and our heifers are raised on grass. Their cow, they're housed on pasture year round. And this, we plant a bunch of winter annuals, which are very high in protein. And this springtime, and they are just booming with all the rain we had these past couple of weeks. And that's what their primary eat. And that's really helping them grow in height and weight. So what Farmer and Austin is saying, they have basically a buffet of all different types of grasses. And so they're getting to munch on as much grass as they want, and it's nice and fluffy. So when they're in the pasture, not only are they going to eat as much as they want, but they're also very comfortable. We like to make sure our cows are comfortable and taken care of, because in reality, if they're comfortable and taken care of, then they're going to take care of us. Right. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe so 450 pounds or so and they started at just a mere 80 or 100 pounds. They have grown so much and we've got a lot of people giving a lot of love to their calves. They said that they love their cow, they love Gabby um, and just cannot believe how big they are now. So, um, you know, you guys have really been taking clearly great care of them and we've been learning about that in all our updates what what they've been eating and what you've been feeding them um which is which is absolutely fantastic um so they're getting close to five feet tall close to your height Shelby yes, which is, they are. this is crazy um and they all seem pretty personable um do you want to just explain you know Right now, they're kind of they're just in a gated area right now, and this isn't where they would normally live. But do you want to just talk about where they would normally be right now? And and we just have them here so we could see them. But what, what's their living situation right usually? Their living situation normally is just they're right now in their house on about twenty five acres of just green pastures with access to sh a tree line for shade when it gets warmer but they have fresh access to fresh water and feed a day, but they're really not hitting the feed as much because they're getting so much protein and energy from all the green grass grown. Right. They have a nice place to lay. 
in fresh water, and they're just in a fenced in 25 acre pasture, and we move them in base by size and age. Okay. So once once they reach a certain age and size, we will move them back to a different pasture where we can just keep them where they're not pushing the smaller heifers around from the different ones. Right. That makes sense. But we don't want this 500 to push a 200 pounds from the feed trough. Right. Because the 200 pounds, she's not going to get what she needs. and she's, she's going to be pushed. She's going to get pushed away and not gain the weight and not grow as fast as we would like. Mm-hmm. Right. It's almost like, you know, when you're in elementary school, you wouldn't go to school with high schoolers because they're so much bigger than you. So we're going to make sure that even with our heifers, um, that they're going to stay with the same age group. Mm-hmm. That way they get to hang out with their friend group. Um, and like Austin said, that they have 25 acres. So that's like the size of 25 football fields. So they have plenty of room to roam around and have fun with. I mean, could y'all imagine 25 football fields of just grass to play with your friends with? That That sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, (laughs) I'm going to say, and an unlimited buffet of what we want to eat and, you know, things that are high protein and and really good for us. So they definitely sound like they're living the life. But we appreciate you. We're bringing them up nice and close for us so we could see them today. Because I think if we were on that pasture, they would be enjoying their grass very far away from us. (laughs) Exactly. And they can probably run as fast as a football player, and I cannot. So (laughs) we would be in trouble. Yes. And when they see a camera... Or a strange person like Miss Shannon, they will be gone. Yes, and I didn't mention this earlier, but Cinderella and Kissy, you guys, they are sassy. They are so sassy. They do not like the camera. So they will definitely be running from us if they had the opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We love learning about their personalities and, and how just each one is just a little bit unique. If you don't mind just sharing for anyone that might be joining us that's not from the adopt a cow program that hasn't already learned, we see a lot of different colors in this in this pen right now. You know, we've got the black and white. We've got some that are almost look black. We've got one that's a little bit browner. Can you just talk about the different breeds that are in your pen right now? Yes. Gabby, like I mentioned earlier, she's a purebred Holstein. It's her mama's a Holstein, her dad's a Holstein, her grandma, her granddad. She goes back for generations and generations of purebred Holstein. So she's a 100% purebred Holstein. And that's the black and white one. Yes, that's the black and white one. Our people may know it as the Chick fil A cow. <laughs> I love it. But, but she actually Conquer- kind of has like the markings of the Chick fil A cow, which is. <laughs> <laughs> she, that could be her future. <laughs> right. <laughs> Part-time model, full-time model. milker. <laughs> now, chocolate is the purebred jersey, mm-hmm. which some people may know jerseys to be a little bit lighter, but jerseys can be darker as well. Mm-hmm. And she's a little bit darker jersey, but her mama, her dad, grandma, generation, generations were purebred. Fun fact about the jersey, too, if you really like creamy, rich chocolate milk, or ice cream jerseys make really high fat content um goodies so any of their butter fat is higher than any of these other breeds so if you get milk from a jersey that ice cream or chocolate milk may taste a little richer Ooh. oh that sounds delicious <laughs> and she you also may know the jersey as the mayfield cow if you see a mayfield truck that's on the side of the mayfield truck is a jersey with right. a yellow card that makes sense. Okay, so then who are our two darker ones in the pen then? These are what we call crossbreeds. These are Holstein and Jersey crosses. Their mama were purebred Holsteins, but their dad we bred to a Jersey. And we, we breed them to Jersey for a smaller birth weight calf. These came out of first time moms, which were for a first calf. And we like the crossbreed because they do better since we are a grazing dairy. Our cows are housed on pasture year round. So they're not in a confined barn with fans and misters. So here in Georgia, we all know in July and August, it's hot and sunny. Well, the bigger Holsteins, they're going to be under a shade tree. Well, the crossbreeds, they're going to tolerate the heat just a tad bit better than the Holsteins. And they're going to produce a high volume of milk 
but also they're going to give you the high butterfat from the jersey. So really what we're doing, we're getting two for one. Right. So it's, that's a, it's a bang for your buck. Right. Yeah, that sounds like the ideal animal. And, and you know, you, you talked about, you know, because of the heat down with you guys in, in Georgia. And, and that's the same reason why, you know, a farmer maybe in New England area would be choosing more of the Holstein just because they're a little bit hardier. They can maybe handle colder weather or things like right. that. And, and but you guys will pick a breed that that works good for you. <laughs> Looks like they're all getting cozy and, and starting to get mm-hmm. ready for naps. <laughs> yes, they've been eating their grain in this little pen. So it's about 945 this morning. So they done got their bellies full and they're getting they're getting sleepy. Which I know I will be too. After right. I eat, I get sleepy. <laughs> oh my goodness. They are too darn adorable. Well, thank you for talking about the breeds a little bit. That helps us understand why they're all different colors. And just, you know, for anyone that's wondering, it's just this it's same idea as a different breed of dog or a different breed of horse or whatever it may be. It's, you know, they're all still cows. They just are different breeds, which is pretty cool. Right. And they all have their purpose. Right. Exactly. Yep. Just like there's certain dogs that are good for, you know, actually like hurting animals. And there's some that are way better at at just loving and being a good companion dog and things like that. So same idea for the cows. Oh my goodness. (laughs) Somebody needs neck scratches. (laughs) Fun fact um, for our Troop County friends are listening. um, Farmer Austin talked about Mayfield's milk earlier. And if you're drinking milk in the cafeteria, it's actually from Mayfield's. And our milk at Walter Dairy goes towards Mayfield. Um, so just like you see the cow chocolate is, um, you're going to have a lot of jerseys that are given to the Mayfield milk. Oh, my gosh. So that's awesome. So I mean, anyone, yeah. if you if they're drinking Mayfield milk at all, it's a pretty it's a possible chance that they'd be drinking milk from your farm, which is really right. cool. Oh, we love so, that. Yes. Yeah. So kiddos, Strip County, make sure you drink some today for us. There you go. Yes. Make sure you get, make sure you get, get, get that included in your lunch today, which would be great. Um, Farmer Shelby and Austin, we have a couple questions that have been coming in. If you guys are okay to answer some questions and we can keep loving up on the cows too while we're, while we're answering these questions, that's totally fine because they're being adorable right now. Um, so one question was from Laura Robinson. They're wondering how many calves do you have on the farm? And so maybe you talk about number of calves and then total number of cows. Right now, we probably, I'm just going to use it on the yearly numbers because it's easier to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On a yearly, probably raise probably about 30 baby calves as replacement heifers. But we also, what we may not, maybe different from other farms, we also raise some bull calves okay. for our beef herd that we'll mm-hmm. sell later on. That's part of our beef. And we probably all together with replacement with replacement cows and our number of dry cows and milking cows, we got about 200 cows all together. So we're okay. not a big dairy. We're a smaller dairy, but it's what we can handle as a young farm couple. I mean, we do got my dad and brother that help me when they're not at their full-time job, but I'm here full-time usually by myself. So I got enough that I can handle. <laughs> No, that makes sense. And, and you, uh, you mentioned just um, it's a smaller farm than normal, but that's, that allows you to really get to know each one of your cows pretty, pretty well. So I think that's unique and very, and works for your family, which is awesome. Yes. I that. can tell you each one of my cows when they walk in the milking parlor, just by the looking at their udder. Right. <laughs> by their number. Which is incredible. Um, now, Farmer Austin, you mentioned the term dry cow. Um, do either one of you want to explain, you know, what exactly is a dry cow? You know, she's not not drinking water. So what, what does a dry no. cow mean? <laughs> a dry cow is a cow that is a cow that is, is further along in her pregnancy where she's not. We turn them dry at so far where they can go. They've been milking so many months. Mm-hmm. But they can just go on a, I like to call it as a vacation. Like everybody deserves a vacation. These girls have milked 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 months. Well, every day, twice a day for over a year, we give them a two to two and a half month dry period or vacation where they can just go lay around in the pasture and get eat grain. But the diet is a special feed where they can just gain their strength and energy back and get ready for their next calf they're about to have within that two and a half two to two and a half month period 
So they're not milking. They're just they're just on vacation, relaxing. Right. Oh, that sounds like a nice, nice little vacation, maternity vacation before she joins milking herd again or for the first time. So that makes sense. Thank you, Farmer Austin, for explaining that. We appreciate that. You're um, so we've got another question. Oh, so we just had some folks asking uh, which one was Kissy and which one was Cinderella just because they look so much alike. So I think if it's if we're correct, Kissy is 84 and Cinderella is 83. Is that correct? That's yes. correct. So the one you're looking at right now is going to be Kissy. They do look very similar. <laughs> they do. Yes. And I have something to say to that. These yellow ID tags, since they look so much alike, that's why we put their number in them. That ID tag will carry their, will be with them till they leave this farm or something happens to them. That's how we identify each cow is with that ID tag. So that's really that's important like, for you. Yep. Like Farmer Austin said, just like we have a first and last name, this is kind of like their first name. Even though we know them as Kissy and um, Cinderella, this actually helps us a little bit too to keep our records, which is super important if you want to be a successful farmer to keep good records. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, you have, I'm sure you've got, um, you know, you've got to make sure you keep track of whenever they get vaccinated or if they're ever sick, you have to make sure you keep track of that. You want to keep track of their milk production when they get older. So um, that's a great way of being able to keep track of them. We love that. That's right. Um, okay, so we've got some other questions coming in. Uh, let's see. So Laura was wondering, how much water do cows drink in a day? So it said that a cow can drink a bathtub full of water each day. That's a lot of water. Could y'all imagine drinking that much? <laughs> I, I can really drink a gallon. <laughs> I know. Wow. And a bathtub full probably is what, like 30, 40 gallons or something, somewhere around there? Somewhere around yeah. there. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's a lot of water. So drink mm -hmm. up. We, we can't compete with a cow. That's for sure. So you must go that's through right. quite a bit of water then on a farm. Um, how do you, how do you manage providing water 24 seven for these girls to make sure they can drink that much water? Luckily we have a very good well. <laughs> we got two, we got three wells on the farm that help us keep water, but we also have a, a well maintained flowing creek they can go in and drink too hmm. that is That's fresh nice. so they have yeah. very good access to water we have about seven different water troughs for the milking cows to drink from that's okay. just the milking herd right so and they have to go oh, ahead sorry <laughs> that's just because we don't want every cow to be all at one trough right so can you imagine a hundred cows on a hot summer day trying to drink from one water trough right somebody's not gonna get no water right <laughs> yeah that 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 sounds wonderful especially for that georgia heat they've got all that all yeah. that uh, space to drink their water and and continue growing and producing milk because they need to be able to drink lots of milk or lots of water to produce their milk so, that's awesome. right Brittany. like you were saying um actually a large percent of milk is water so not only is it important for them to maintain their body temperature by drinking a lot of um, water you know how hot it is think about when you go play some kind of um, game maybe softball soccer football and then you're so hot and you want water they're the same way they want water to control their body temperature but also there's a lot of water in milk so it's super important if they're producing milk that they're drinking enough water makes sense uh, we had another good question come in from Mrs. Hamilton's class. They were wondering how long is the gestational period for a cow? So their gestational period, is, Austin will be able to tell you the days, but it's just like a mama. Um, they're pregnant for nine months and then they have a calf. So just like a human, um, but I'm sure Farmer Austin could tell you the days. <laughs> I don't know the exact days. Um, I don't want to tell you wrong. <laughs> nope, that makes sense. But so nine months, just like a human, you know, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. It depends mm -hmm. on. But uh, so and you're able to pretty much track that uh, almost by the day and, and know when they're going to have their baby. Right. As as farm managers, you're able to pretty much know just about spot on, you know, just like humans. We, we've got like a two week kind of wiggle room time, but that's about the same for cows then as well. Yes, we we keep a very good record of our breeding calendar. 
we write them down when when they need to go dry, when they're going to come in. So we can move them to our close-up pasture within three weeks of them do because they can have a calf up to two weeks early, just like humans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I know an old dairy farmer told me 10 days before, 10 days after their due date, they can have a calf. Right. <laughs> Sounds pretty familiar like humans. Yeah. <laughs> a fun fact about um, when their mamas were pregnant with them, I actually was pregnant during the same time as their mamas. I have a little six and a half month old baby, which we hope oh. is going to be the second generation dairy farmer. His name is TJ. So oh. um, it's funny to think that my baby, mine and farmer's Austin baby, is about 15 and a half pounds. And they were born about the same time as these calves. Uh, it's yeah. crazy how fast they grow. Right. So, yeah, you're, I mean, your son is probably just still kind of cooing, probably not really mm-hmm. walking yet or anything. Okay. And, and then there are these girls who are, su- I mean, going into adulthood within six months to a year. And it's, it's kind of crazy. And that actually brings up a, a good question that um, we've got coming up. When will our adopted calves get to the age where they can be pregnant and then have a calf to join the milking herd? They will join, they will be ready to go with the bull because we we natural breed all our heifers. They will go they're six and a half months, so probably within nine to eleven months, they will be old enough to get pregnant and then hopefully nine months from there. So about eighteen months. Wow. So eighteen just, months. Oh. Not that far along. Yeah, they will be, and that's when you would, is that when you would consider them adults then, you know, once they join that milking herd and, and they can start producing milk, is that when they would join the milking herd? That's correct. That's when I, that's when I consider them adults. Yeah. Yeah. Because they'll be coming, we don't, we wouldn't consider them as heifers no more. Once they have their first calf, they be, they're now called a cow. Right. That makes sense. Yep. So two years from now, you could actually see their babies in here. They could be a part of the program. Oh, that would be so cute. Oh, that sounds so fun. Wow. They really mature very quickly. That's uh, thank you for, for sharing that with us. That's, that's pretty cool. But they, I've, I think I've heard someone say before that one cow year is about like 10 human years, you know, give or take. So it makes sense. You know, it's by the time they're two, two and a half years old, they'd be 20, 25 years old and time for adulthood and having a baby. So it matches about right. Uh, so we've got another question. This is a fun one. They were wondering um, how long is a cow's tongue? <laughs> Do you know by any chance? That's a good question for me. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> they probably, I mean, I they can take them out. Yes, they can. They are long enough to try and open a gate with their tongue. I will tell you that. Oh my God. I'm hoping that maybe, maybe can we get some footage up? We got a little bit. They can even pick their nose with their tongue. (laughs) That's a treat, right? Right. And they're, and you know, they're like their nozzle mouth part of their head is, is pretty big and then they can stick it out pretty far. So I'd be willing to bet it's, it's potentially close to a foot long. I would think, you know, eight, eight inches, 10 inches, probably at least. We'll we'll have to see. Yeah. (laughs) Um, let's see. Oh, we had another question wondering how long can cows live? What's their average lifespan? That's a good question. Each farm is different. So each cow is different, but I'm going to say on average, probably eight to 10 years old, but a fun fact on, on Walter Dairy, our oldest cow was 15 years old. Wow. And was still milking and And remember what Miss Brittany said, a cow, one year to a cow is like 10 years. So that means that cow was like 150 years old. Right. Crazy. She was living a really good life to be able to live that long. That is just absolutely incredible. 15 years old. And you said she's still on the farm. Is that what you said? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Her, Her name, her name is grandma. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> very fitting. I would say that is very fitting. <laughs> oh my goodness. We have had some really good questions coming in. Thank you everybody for submitting those questions. Um, we have one more question and then we'll do our final wrap up. So, um, so first our last question, someone was just wondering um, if cows can have twins or is it normal to have twins slash have you ever had twins? Uh. 
yes, cows can have twins. It's not normal, but it's not abnormal. I mean, it's just like humans. Humans can have twins, so, so can cows. Mm -hmm. A fun fact is one year I had 10 sets of twins in one year. Oh, my gosh. By the same herd bull. Wow. He was clearly carrying a twin gene. <laughs> that was... I, <laughs> yes. Wow. That's incredible. So twins are, you know, you know, not as common, but that's pretty cool that they're, you've had some on your farm. Yes. They're not as common, but they are common. Very cool. Very cool. Well, um, we have had a lot of fun chatting with you. And to wrap up today, we would love to ask you one last question, which is, what is your why? Why have you guys chosen to be first generation farmers and kind of taken on the, the, the challenge of, you know, kind of not really having vacation time, so, you know, committing to taking care of these girls all the time? What's your why? Why have you chosen to do this? My why to be a dairy farmer, as you said, we don't get no vacations. There's no holidays, rain, sleet, snow, or shine. The cows got to be tended to. Yes, on Christmas morning, we're feeding milk and cows. But my why is it's my passion. I love these cows. I think of it as being a parent to all of them because they can't tell me what's wrong with them. I have to be able to identify what's wrong with them. They can't talk. We have to clean up after them. I just love being outside in God's atmosphere, working with the animals, being my own boss, being in Mother Nature, and just doing what I was called to do, be a dairy farmer, and yeah. producing a high-quality product for the consumer. Yeah, and we thank you for that. <laughs> I think off of that, too, um, I'm not full-time on the farm because I'm a full-time teacher, um, but I do get to help around the farm sometimes, not as much as I used to because now having a baby is a little harder, but I think part of having our son, TJ, and seeing what we can provide for him in the future, what we can create for him, and what we can give him a life, an opportunity on the farm, and learn um, from nature, and just giving him something that hopefully he'll want one day, um, and that he can call his own, and something that we've started from the ground up, um, that we'll be able to give to him, and I hope that's a good way of life for him. Um, we're happy to be here, and I think it's where we want to call home for the long run, um, and I'm always happy to support my husband in any um, adventures he may take so we're here for him 100 percent oh my goodness we love that we, we love your dedication to the dairy industry and providing a really wholesome healthy product that some of you may be enjoying in in lunch today at school uh, if you drink mayfield milk which is pretty awesome so thank you to both of you for one being a host farm this year for two letting us adopt your calves they've been a lot of fun learning about this year and three just just being really good farmers, good stewards of the land, um, and just really great caretakers of your cows. It's been a lot of fun getting to work with you guys this year. And I know everyone's really enjoyed getting to meet the calves uh, from your farm. So thank you so much for everything you've done. Is there any last, uh, last minute words here before we tune off today from you guys? Now we appreciate y'all allowing us to have this opportunity. Um, we hope we can be a part of it next year. And um, we hope that these classrooms will be a part of it next year. And if you have learned about the dairy industry, do me a favor. When you go home today, I want you to tell your parents something that you learned during this program. And then I also want you to grab a friend that maybe didn't adopt a cow and tell them something you learned about the dairy industry. Love it. I love it. Yeah. Anything from you, Farmer Austin? I just really appreciate y'all and being part of the Adopt a Calf program. We really enjoyed y'all. It was really fun. And we hope to see y'all next year. Awesome. Thank you so much, Farmer Austin and Farmer Shelby. I love it. Let's go and share the, the good, good news of dairy and grab a friend, tell them about it and have a glass of milk on behalf of Farmer Shelby and Farmer Austin today. We had a lot of fun. Thank you so much, everybody. We hope you enjoyed the program and we'll be, uh, be in touch with you soon. Have a great day, everybody. Take care.